Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is Pixorifs, our writer is XP. captions on this video were provided by Liara. We're on week 3 of hand-drawn thumbnails, week 2 of fawning over the autocrafter, and week 1 of the new Life series, hilariously titled Secret Life, so we'd like to welcome the new additions to the team, Pets, Bees, Walter Mitty, and the American Teenager. Also, we're on week 85 of Hermitcraft, I suppose, and we'd be happy to hear your opinion on all of those things in the comments. Granted, we'll just be covering that last one here on the show. Try as they might, there is not a redstone contraption to craft up this show for us, and before you remind us ChatGPT exists, we'd like to remind you that we trust ChatGPT even less than we trust our own skill with redstone. So let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Now, like, I mean, we're at 932 times the game's been run. Wow. Like, can you guys just appreciate how many times to get? That's insane. Decked That's Out 1 was run like 370 something times. It's crazy. Starting with Iskal85, whose skills with redstone are trustworthy enough, but he discovers he's overlooked a technical aspect of the storage for his bartering farm. The nether portal only loads a small area of the chunks around it, and his enderpearl and quartz filters are outside of that area. But it's not that big of a problem because of the fact that I have the lava dump machine of doom over there. You could call that coping. Shrugging that off as a minor inconvenience, he hurls himself back into decked out so quickly that he forgets to remove his elytra. And a couple of unfortunate deaths later, Coralis arrives to mock him for it. How, how did you lose the elytra? Did you forget to take it off? Well... Well, actually... Oh, well, okay. okay. I don't do, I don't do. Uh, it was, wall hacking. It was... He also pressures Iskel into putting the Ember Seeker cards back into his deck, the better to leave the dungeon with some more impressive cards. But eventually, Iskel decides to expand his deck by just buying some cards from Doc M, and does a final run disguised as Coralis in case the Ravagers can be stared down. We'll let you figure out how well that goes. Ravagers, more like savagers. <laughs> I am word punning. XB Crafted has a similar idea. Buying his cards from other players, I mean. He's seen firsthand the perils of dressing someone up as Coralis. This is the best thing ever, Jim. <laughs> I know, right. he's like a shard dispenser. I, I only have, I only have three <laughs> remaining. With an abundance of frost shards and a shortage of time, XB is happy to trade a few of his spare shards to players who've got a more advanced collection. But he still steps into the dungeon and continues exploring, completing a run and earning enough crowns to buy the dungeon lackey perk from the shop. So expect a future playthrough with director's commentary once Tango is available. Oh, look, oh it actually kind of fits. That fits our outfit. Look at that. And the record for longest Hermitcraft episode that wasn't a live stream goes to Etho, who posts a Christopher Nolan length video featuring all his Phase 4 decked out runs. He claims this phase is all about deck building, and several times in this episode you'll see him swiping uncommon or rare cards from the endgame shop. He also experiments with repairing Rusty the Golem more than once, and various other ways to bite off more than he can chew. The Ravagers, on the other hand, can chew quite a lot. Etho's prowess in the dungeon even leads to the queue of waiting players jumping him after he's done with a particularly long run, after which he encourages them not to vote for the armadillo at Minecraft Live, which is pretty funny in retrospect. Nice man, good. He did, good. He did a great deal with me, and yeah. I'm being gen. I'm feeling. I'm feeling this bad. This is a very happy day. Also, Thank you, also if I do this, because <laughs> I feel bad. Whoa, <laughs> Cleo! No, 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 no. <laughs> now I gotta give you something else. Cubfan's strategy to the dungeon runs even deeper, as does Cubfan himself, finally entering the deadly difficulty of the game. All good, all good, there were so many decisions to make. So many decisions yeah, no. to make. But despite saving his win books for later, for a couple of phases now, Cub does ultimately cash in just in time for phase 4 to conclude, which quite incredibly crowns him the winner, as well as Etho. Coming in first place. No way, no way, it's a tie, no way. With what? It's a tie? Oh, snap. Oh, wow. That's right, for phase four, Cubfan and Etho have tied for first place, and they will have to share that pedestal for an extra week now because Tango Tech is taking another maintenance break to maintain the dungeon, himself, and his robust hockey addiction. Would you hold on and explain what's going on? Because we're all sitting here, we're all waiting. <laughs> the door's been closed for weeks. Yeah, 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 tell us why. the shakes. Yeah, I know. Certain changes need to be made to the dungeon oh. to <clears throat> level three. Um, oh, no. And then we also have uh, some special new content coming up in the next phase that I wanted to get ready. Ooh. Okay, that, okay, that okay I, that's that I exciting. think you guys are gonna like. The Ice Capades continue with False Symmetry, who performs the vital service of bringing hot chocolate to the winter sporting event. And well, since that stream, I've actually added a few banners and made it come alive, or at least uh, as much as I can do for now. 
but it's just needing some glowing signs and some steam coming from the mug on top. False's building ability spreads wider over the ice boat race track of Ren and Ethos, and yes, a Coco truck is involved, as well as an overpass above the starting line for the Elytra challenge. Though there is not a stairway to bring False above messing with her fellow men, and so she joins in on Ijevin's trick-or-treat initiative. Prank Symmetry is back on the table, but she might have knocked all the other names off of it. We'll have to wait and see who ends up being the victim for this one. Hmm, maybe not that. I'm gonna have to assume I'll put a name in first, but uh, I guess let me check in with Jevin and uh, see how this works. Real Life has unfortunately pranked Vintage Beef, who had to take a hiatus from the server because of some recurring back issues. So hopefully it's not too ironic to say he's back now, and has decided that since he's now way behind everyone else in Decked Out, he's going to focus on his own card game instead. Again, I'm, I'm rusty. The TCG Battle Royale Island is now at the point where it needs stocking with barrels containing the cards players will build their decks from, and the weapons and armor they'll need to attack and defend against the other players who might have something they need. Beef even throws potions and enderpearls into the mix, promising a chaotic free-for-all melee before the real tournament begins. Some of them are underwater, some of them are on the beach, some of them are in the castle, in the village, in the gorge. You may be forgiven for thinking Gemini Tay's base is a challenge area too, till the past week. Granted, there is a Dripleaf parkour course down in the basement of it, but building that to train for Decked Out seems to only have underlined just how parkour course the rest of her elven castle is on the inside. Well, no more, as Gem took it upon herself to fill in and feel out as much of the keep's interior as she can. From the tippy top of the witch's tower to the base of the murder basement, she makes sure there are rooms on rooms and stairs of stairs for one to get lost in. I'm trying to kind of plan this interior how you would plan a real life interior, if that makes sense. Like we have a path of travel here and we don't really want to put furniture in front of that. Also the robust crawl space network, but we'll leave it to the neighbor to install the secret passages. And yes, in case you are wondering, the sprint is toggled. Cause that's right everyone, this mega base is officially done. I mean, I finished the whole thing. And finally, there's Joe Hills, who demonstrates his ongoing commitment to the bit by collecting even more warm water fish to refill the guppy geyser in his decked out alcove, while regaling us with stories of his recent travels. And the show hadn't really started yet. Like the goblins were like starting to warm up the audience. What? You thought two o'clock was just a suggestion? What is your excuse? The people are like, we couldn't find parking. And all the goblins are like, Oh, okay, parking. Yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> These fish are all loaded up in time for Tango to announce the results of Phase 4, where Joe definitely features on the board, but the fish fountain nearly backfires when Tango tries to award him the shards he'll need for Phase 5. Oh my god, the fish over here, Joe. The fish are and going the fish, crazy. I know, the fish. It wasn't Ethan working gets... last week, so I had to overpopulate it this time. Ethan. Somebody's getting a full inventory oh, of fish. Ooh, cruel, oh, cruel so, game. Listen, if you what? want shards... <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> oh, they're everywhere. Oh man. <laughs> and that's about it for this week's recap hour, writers Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.